first and foremost, as you can see, we've got a live stream link. That means that everything that I do, even if I fall off the stage, will live forever in a recording and a live stream. So that is because of our fantastic team, Pull Spark. Can you all wave to Pull Spark and give me a hi, Pull Spark? Thank you. Pull Spark gives us this every single month for free because they are very nice and lovely people, which means that if you are a presenter, you get to watch yourself, critique yourself, and you get to share it with your grandma, which is also awesome, and or potential investors. So thank you, Pull Spark, for being a fantastic friend of Startup Village. All right. And then we have a couple of other uh, sponsors. I would say sponsor, but that seems weird because I'm standing in your space. So... Atlanta Tech Village for six years? Six years has been hosting this event out of the kindness of their hearts. And so Kelly Ann is going to tell us a little bit about this. Can we give a round of applause for ATV? And now I'm going to get off the stage. Hello. Thanks for coming out tonight. I'm Kelly Ann O'Neill, and I'm the member success manager here at the Atlanta Tech Village. We're the fourth largest technology startup hub in the nation. We have over 1,000 members and over 300 startups. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you have proprietary technology, and if you desire an awesome community, this should be your home. We would love for you to go online tonight to our website, atlantatechvillage.com, and look up what membership would look like for you. And if you have any immediate questions tonight after this, we will be standing in the back by the sound booth, and you can come ask us. But welcome to our home, home of Startup Village. We're glad you're here. Cheers to you guys. I got back off the stage because I am afraid I'm going to fall off of it, but I'm going to stand over here and tell you about our other sponsor. So who here has a beer? Are you, who is excited about the free good beer? Thank you. That beer is due to the fantastic friendship of our friends at ATDC. So Jackie, tell us about ATDC. Round of applause, y'all. Hi, I'm Jackie from ATDC. We are Atlanta's, uh, Georgia's technology incubator, and we are really excited to be here and be part of this community. We pour beer here every quarter. I'm here to tell you about two things. We have our startup, uh, our annual startup Confab, which is in uh, April 18th this year, and their early bird tickets are now available. You can get more information by the beer. Second thing, we are going to be taking 14 of Atlanta's best and brightest, most promising startups to the West Coast. And that is open to any startup, not just ATDC startups. So please, if you want to know more about it, the deadline is February 1st, this Friday. Go to the beer stand and look for Jane and she can tell you all about, all about it. Thanks. All right, and now we have a couple more housekeeping pieces because y'all are sitting in some chairs in this fantastic space, but they also have to get taken down because this space does many other things. So we have volunteers who help us put up and take down chairs. If you would like to be a volunteer in return for a 30 second pitch, please see Hilton in the back booth after, she's waving. Um, all you have to do is set up and take down chairs, not hard. So I have got my first presenter, Chris with Patient Co. Come on up. Y'all are not very clappy. Clap. <laughs> Hi, I'm from Patient Co. We're solving the uh, painful part of healthcare, the bill. We do this uh, by making it easy for patients to understand what they're uh, getting billed for and give them flexible options to pay for it. Uh, you might have paid a bill through our platform with some of our providers that are in the uh, Atlanta area, like Northside, Piedmont, and uh, Emory Decatur. We're doing this by combining simple, friendly UX with powerful, uh, modern web technologies. Whether you want to build a great user experience with us with Angular Review, or you want to build a uh, powerful backend with AWS, Kubernetes, Go, or PHP, we're hiring. If you're interested in this, come talk to uh, the people in the green shirts, or come visit us about a block from here in Terminus 200. Thank you. Billy with Boo Digital. What's up, everybody? I'm Billy Boozer. Um, I, uh, hey, that was nice. Um, 
So I, uh, I uh, own a software company called uh, Boo Digital. We build software for large enterprises, and we'd like to build software for you. I also uh, do a YouTube series called Coffee Shop Talks, where I meet with entrepreneurs here in Atlanta and uh, just chat with them about their successes and failures. So uh, February, we're going to kick off the new season of that. I'll have 12, 12 episodes this year. And so if you want software built or you're interested in chatting about your entrepreneurial experience, uh, come see me after. I'll be over there next to the wall. So... See y'all. Y'all have fun. And awkwardly, Jason, you have to put down your camera to take the mic. Jason, I just have content creator written on here, so you're going to have to do better than that. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? I'm Jason. I am a advertising and marketing photographer. So I understand that startups need consistent content on a constant basis. So I strategize with my clients to establish their marketing goals and come in and shoot a month or two months worth of content in one day for a flat rate. So that's keeping in mind effectiveness and the bottom line and the general message you're trying to get across with an understanding of digital marketing. So if you have content needs or just want to goof off with me about content, come find me. Thanks, guys. One last thing for tonight. If you've been here in the last couple months, you know that we're People may or may not have done dance contests to win swag, which is fantastic. But tonight, I recommend that you listen closely to the pitches because after every single one, I have a question that's in the pitch that will win you swag. So pay attention to the pitches. There are, what, ATV socks, a hat, all sorts of fanciness in there. So, I'm sorry? Two different shirts. I once wore an ATV shirt through a, I think a Seattle airport and somebody recognized it and chased me down to talk to me about Atlanta. So, ATV shirts, hot properties. All right, so tonight we have our very first presenter. We ready to go? Before we get oh. started, we have a lot of friends hanging out back here. Friends who are in the hallway. If you have an open seat next to you, raise your hand. Hey, look, they want friends. Come sit next to them. Cool. All right, we're going to get started. She's not wrong. <laughs> All right. Give it up for our very first presenter, Nicole with NG Fit. <laughs> Woo! Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole Garcia, and I'm the founder of NG Fit, a social fitness app. I'm so excited to be here today, um, especially being part of the first event of the new year. I don't know what it is about the new year, but it's always exciting when I can set like my New Year's resolutions, figure out exactly what I want to do for the new year with a clean slate. I don't know about you guys, um, probably you've set some New Year's resolutions at some point, um, especially if you have a startup, um, setting goals to live healthier, to travel more. I know that's huge. Um, and, and a lot of this is just like so exciting for me. I know that January 1st, for some reason, is like the perfect time to get a gym membership. Have you guys noticed this? Um, and then a few weeks after January 1st, this happens. The gym is empty. There's nobody there except for, okay, those usuals that, that go all the time. Um, and then there's a new trend of um, fitness where you don't have to go to the gym. You can actually work in the comfort of your home. There's a lot of apps that have launched um, where you can stream your workouts. You can do it all by yourself. Nobody's holding you accountable. You can decide to do it or not. Um, but there's just so many options out there. But even with all these options available, there's still a missing piece. A lot of us still need that motivation. We need that community of encouraging um, supportive group. And so, and actually, um, studies show that when you do work out with somebody, um, you're more likely to achieve your fitness and health goals. So that's why last year, uh, last summer, I launched a workout partner app, um, really to build a community where you can find an accountability partner. You can be surrounded by a community that's encouraging, that's motivational, uh, where you can share your fitness journey so that you're not just doing it alone. So that you don't just do the January 1st, yay, let me join the gym, and then a few weeks later, you're no longer uh, going to the gym. Um, you have somebody who's like, hey, let's go, let's try out this new class, um, let's get back to our, um, to our goals. So um, 
this is what the app looks like. Uh, I launched it in the summer. So on the app, you can create a fitness profile. You can add like what time you want to work out, what your goals are, your activities, you like to go hiking, um, what time of the day. You can even um, search through and filter users on a list and a map view. So you can see who's around you. So even if you're traveling, you can find somebody who's local. Um, so you can meet people, really find like that uh, community of accountability. You can message users on the app. And you can also, um, whoops, you can create a workout session. So for example, if you have a, a football team or you're trying to start up a kickball team, this is a great platform where you can connect, invite people to join, and a really great recruiting um, effort through the app. Also, another feature is reminders. So I know a lot of us, we tell ourselves in our mind, okay, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna do this, but we're not holding ourselves accountable and tracking what we're actually doing. So you can create reminders, invite others in your reminders so that um, you can just have it all in a nice calendar. So this is what the app looks like. I launched it in July. And from, since launching, I've learned a lot about what people are looking for in their community. So I put here as NGFit 2.0, and this next month, I'm adding a community feed. So I know a lot of you guys are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Those are um, active feeds. And so I'm adding a feed where people can post their photos. They can post their um, gym workouts. Um, they can suggest recommendations and really just build more of a community. So I'm really excited because this next update is going to have a community feed. Um, you can post on the app and also upload onto Facebook and Instagram and then a referral program. So I know I've pitched at different events, and so hopefully some of you have heard about the app. Um, but it's free to download. You guys can check it out. Um, join the community. It's really uh, just to build more of a community, connect with others in your area who have similar goals, interests, um, and live nearby. So that's what I have for NGFit 2.0. Again, my name is Nicole Garcia, and I'm with NGFit. <laughs> All right, questions? So the adoption in New so the question is, how is the adoption in New York? So. Actually, my prime audience is in New York. Um, as far as engagement, I can see that there is engagement, people connecting um, through the app. You can look on the map itself and see how many users there are. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, so the app, so the question is, how am I monetizing on the app? So it is a freemium model. It's free to download, available on iOS for now. And um, there is options for personal trainers and fitness professionals to feature on the app. They actually get their own profile, and there's also ads that they can push throughout, especially to their fitness audience. So that's a recurring monthly subscription. Question. So I started off with, so the question is, it's on iOS. Um, as a self-funded startup, I had to start somewhere. So I started with iOS, which is where my demographic is. And I don't plan on just building an Android later. I'd like to redevelop React Native and just have it consistent throughout. So if you're a developer out there, React Native, I'd love to talk with you. Okay, question in the back. So the question is, can you distinguish users between, based on their level of expertise in an activity? Um, I am including that feature, because right now I do have it just set up where you can select the activity. Um, but that is uh, a feature that I am, am adding. Any other questions? So the question is, is it um, individually based or group based as far as connecting on the app? So right now you can just connect one on one, um, but it's you connect through them by what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a hiking partner and you're looking for somebody to go swimming and you know, you can filter. It's not just, for example, like a Tinder like swiping. It's more you search based on what you're looking for because your needs could change every day.
-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the suggestion is to really integrate a group feature where people can connect on a group basis as opposed to just individually. Definitely a great suggestion. Question. The question is about safety. I am so like, safety is so important. Um, so when you actually sign up on the app, you actually verify your phone number, similar to like your banking with there's a second uh, form of verification. Um, that's one way we do it. You cannot use a Google number. It has to be an actual phone number. So that's built in from the beginning. Um, I am building in new features so that when you are meeting with someone, you can actually say I'm meeting with this person and an alert button to notify if there is any case of um, unsafe situations. We also put in our community guidelines that we do recommend you meet in a group setting or in a public setting. So that's very much communicated in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So the question is, do I plan to partner with um, local community uh, gyms and fitness uh, centers? So yes, that is the ultimate goal, uh, to partner with them. Um, so I'm, I'm just looking to improve the features that I know need to be improved based on the feedback I've received, enhance that before I um, go forward to, to a gym and, and, and really integrate with what they have. Question. So right now, there's no, so the question is r related to um, tracking the actual workout. Um, I don't have that built in. However, I'm looking at integrating third-party APIs to integrate and, and show what you've completed with somebody else um, as a workout. I think there was another question over there. Oh, question. No, so I actually, so I did partially answer this. Um, the question was, I have iOS, do I plan on having Android? So I'm planning to build it on React Native, which will offer both um, software options. Any other questions? Oh, there's one way in the back. Okay, sorry, I couldn't see you. I couldn't see you. <laughs> sorry about that. So as of yet, um, we have a few personal trainers signed up. However, we, I haven't been gearing to, oh, the question. Um, the question is, uh, what is the success so far, especially in relation to finding a personal trainer and are people teaming up together and, and what have I learned from that? And sharing the cost. Okay, so Personal trainers, when they create a profile, they actually show what their rates are one-on-one -on -one in group settings. And um, right now, my focus has been getting regular users uh, onboarded first before promoting to personal trainers because they, I need to prove an ROI. So right now, I'm more focused on the, um, the average user uh, and will be focusing more on, on building that personal trainer community second. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. I am informed that I have swag tucked back over here. I do. All right, fantastic. I have an ATV shirt, which I'm trying to read sideways. Hang on. Oh, put a dent in the universe. This is a good shirt. All right, so the question, the question is, what is the main thing that Nicole is excited about that's being included in the next update for NGFIT? Somebody yell it out. Okay. He's like, all right, we're gonna work on this. I don't know, he got up. He's self-starting. Um, all right. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Thank you. Okay, so new ground rules. 
When I ask the question, you have the answer, yell it out first. I appreciate, y'all are all really polite. Everybody raise their hand. I appreciate this. I am Southern. I say y'all, I appreciate the politeness. Moving forward, yell it out. Let's get some energy up in here. All right. Are we ready to go? All right. Our, well, there wasn't anything up there. I believed you. Um, okay. Our next presenter, Undelay. Perfect. Round of applause, y'all. Why do I get clapped? How's everybody doing? All right, so I'm going to start you guys off with a great commercial. Do you ever wonder why so many planes are delayed and you don't know the reason why? The reason is because airline employees still use old phones and radios to communicate. We have a better solution. Undelay is a mobile application that allows all airline employees to communicate faster. We provide real-time flight arrival and departure groups for employees to communicate the cause of delays for any flight. Undelay, making airline travel faster and customers happier. Airline employees can download our app by going to www.undelayapp.com. All right. All right. So, as the video explained, Undelay is a mobile application that streamlines the communication process between airlines' frontline employees. So the cost of flight delays. The airline industry loses $8.2 billion a year due to delays. Flight attendants sometimes have problems with communicating and catering due to old landlines. This could take up to 20 minutes of delay time. A agents on the ground have to set up radios, and this could take up to 15 minutes of delay time. History of communication. In the 1920s, airlines and airports first used hand signals to communicate. In the 1950s, the FAA used radios to communicate much better. Today, we are still using a very old style of communication. So the current airline communication tree, the pilot is in constant communication between the gate agents and flight attendants using radios. So there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one communication. The pilot will tell the ALA agent to when they're taking off and the flight attendants communi communicate to catering. Underlay provides a real-time communication tree where everyone is communicating at the same time. So not only everyone is communicating at the same time, but there's a track record of everything that has been said or done. So this is the mobile application demo. So we provide real-time flight data for Delta, Southwest, all the major US carriers. And by using their location, we can detect if they're in a two-mile radius within their respective airport that they work in. We can also search the flights by which flights are delayed. We can search by location of the arrivals or departures, gate code, as well as flight number. So, let's wait for my management. So, so every flight is its own group. So let's say I want to click in a flight. Now. <laughs> so let's say if I want to communicate that the bags are loaded. So this communicates that the bags are loaded within the group. And once the bags are loaded, I, it shows on the top which gate the bags have been loaded. So let's say we want to exit out the app after communicating that to the airline group. Right? So if somebody else wants to communicate OK, they have received the message, right, because they get a push notification, I as well, I also get a push notification saying, OK, the flights have been loaded. So we have downloads from different airlines within the industry in different locations as well, Tennessee, Atlanta, uh, a few from New York from Delta, Spirit, Frontier, American, as well as United. So we have, through uh, Amplify for Good, we went into a competition to partner with the airport, but we made it to the final place, but we lost. However, they contacted us back. So we're working on a partnership, and we're constantly meeting with the airport to solidify our contract with Thanks Again in the airport. So our competition underlay is not only faster, more usable, and just an overall better experience of communication. You can see that they use old radios and landlines that are just too old. People can't use them. They just, they're terrible. So the team, I am the CEO, Safir Monroe. I'm a full stack mobile web developer, 
and my partner is a AI robotics engineer. You can reach any of us, follow us on LinkedIn, share that YouTube video, that's my commercial, and our commercial, I'm sorry, and check out the website, follow us on LinkedIn, we need LinkedIn followers, and this is Underlay. <laughs> Questions? Questions? First question. What did I do before this? I was a broke college student at Howard University, if there's any Howard alumni, woo woo. And uh, I graduated, I worked for Delta right after I graduated from Howard. So I work at Delta in the day and I code and do underlay at night. So, you know, Batman thing. You know. <laughs> Blue shirt. She said, tell us about the security of the system. So, that's a great question. My partner is a security engineer, so he builds the security fences for the API that hopefully we're piling with the airport, and also he works on the security for the Firebase backend that we're using. So I build out the, I build out the mobile application, build out the web application right now. I've also do the backend, and he works on security in terms of Google Cloud, geofencing, because we want to let our airlines know that we're secure. So security is here, and I'm, I'm here. <coughs> Somebody, somebody had a question up there. <laughs> I can't do it. He said, can he get a buddy pass? I said, I'm sorry. I just can't do it. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, right here, I'm sorry. Can't didn't see you. Right, so the question is, do I augment the front line of flight awareness, which is the airline? So what I do is I use flight APIs to uh, give airline employees real-time data. So typically airline employees like scramble to find out information. So what I do is aggregate that data and streamline it to them and provide them a UI that they can easily use. So instead of like, okay, calling people through radios, you ever seen a gate agent run back and forth, look stressed? I want a private mobile application that, you know, can ease the stress. That's a great question. So originally, I pitch, oh, am I, I'm sorry. Am, he asked me if my partner with the airlines, the airport, that's a great question. So I actually took the app to the airport and then that day I realized that it's a completely different business. So <laughs> I <laughs> Amplify for Good, we actually told the airport, the airport said they had a lot of great connections with airlines. So we ended up saying, okay, let's go for the competition. So we actually have an API that's for the airport that we're using to uh, streamline a lot of their data. And we also have the mobile application for airlines. So the mobile application that takes other a people's APIs, right, and streamlines the data is for the airlines. The API that we have, that we develop and we have partnerships for it to like connect me in the industry and build credibility is for the airports. Follow up question. I got you. So the question was. Am I, it, it's a, I got you. Am I using the data from the airlines, the airport? And what I'm using is public data that's derived from airlines, but it's its own. So I use different flight APIs that have 99.5 accuracy that have their own web crawlers, as well as, I don't, I don't web scrape myself because I don't want to maintain that, but I pay a service about 100 a month to web scrape that different data, and then I segment that data based off when somebody signs up, use their email, location, and I streamline all that data. Okay, we'll, we'll take it offline. That, all the way in the back, you had your hand raised for a, a long time. So do I have weather notifications or random events that might occur? And that's a great question. And what my mobile application does is I want employees to communicate that information based off of airports. So I can take that data, like 
real-time weather data and like real-time situation data, but what I'm testing is I want employees to communicate what's going on through my mobile application to help each other find out what's really the problem because that's public information, but I want to employees to communicate private information to really cut down on delay time because people have apps that relay that type of data, if that makes sense. You said what? I can I could hear hear about fifty percent of that, so okay I would chat after sorry. Round of applause <laughs> here. All right, we're gonna do this differently this time. We're all learning. I'm going to yell out the question. Somebody yells out the answer. I have a fantastic ATV hat, which I am told is in high demand as well. So for undelay, how much money? does the airline industry lose each year? <laughs> Woo! Somebody over here was 8.2. Yes, gentlemen, 8.2 billion. <laughs> Nicely done. All right, taking me at my word, I love this. Okay, I'm gonna do a little song and dance while we switch out people. That's gonna happen. Um, all right, so if you would like to present up here for one of the five minute pitches, there are a couple of very small rules. One, you have to be based in Atlanta. You have to be a startup, which can be sort of nebulous, so chat with me about it. Um, and you have to have something that you can actually present. I say this because now and again I have people with prototypes. Those don't count. They look great. Envision is a fantastic app, but I don't know if they work or not. So please come chat with me after. We can see what we've got. Um, and the follow-up to that is if you are a service provider, the 30-second volunteer pitch in between may be the, or at the beginning now since we've moved it, may be the better fit for you. Are we good or are I still song and dancing? Okay. I know, I feel like I should learn a tap dance just no, for we're this. Good. We're gold. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm gonna say this, cause y'all are in a real clappy bunch. So, round of applause for Make Swift. <laughs> hey guys, uh, my name is Alan. Uh, about three years ago in 2015, I started a company called Landing Lion with some of my, my friends, and some of you guys may know me from that, but today I'm here to talk to you guys about MakeSwift, which is uh, the real problem we decided to start solving. So, to lead into this, I want to talk a little bit about the real problem, and there's this trade-off that we've all become accustomed to over the past you know, two decades, that if you want a custom website, things start to slow down, right? Uh, the workflow speed starts to decrease dramatically the more and more custom you try to get, and everything seems to just start slowing. And the reason for that is because all of our workflows are really centered around the idea of a page. The page is really the building block right now for how we create web content. Um, there's three main systems that we use to manage these pages. When the internet first came out in the 90s, it was all about custom web pages that developers could make, right? And that was fine, you know, there wasn't that many ways to use the internet, display ads weren't that great at that time, um, so we just dealt with the bottlenecks. But what happened is that in the 2000s, search exploded, and all of a sudden there's this new channel for marketing to start acquiring new customers. So of course marketing gets a bigger budget, and we need a tool to let marketing expedite pages to production. So we create this idea of a CMS. Some of you guys might know it as like WordPress. And all it really is is just a collection of templated pages with a rigid layout that you could stuff text and images into. And this held us over for a while. But what ended up happening is that social and mobile exploded right around 2010, and marketing's budget just went through the roof. And they had all these new channels and devices and mediums they needed to support. So we needed ways for marketing to change layout. And we, this is where we came in as a landing page builder, and this is where we learned everything that we know, but what we ended up discovering is that we weren't the only tool people would use in their toolkit, right? People would use some combination of these three systems. They would either have a developer managing some of the pages, they would have a rigid CMS, they couldn't change the layout, and then they might have a landing page tool like ours. And there's actually problems that have spun up from those 
solutions, those little band-aids, and you know, keeping things consistent. All of a sudden, data attribution becomes a huge pain. If anyone's a marketer in the room, they've experienced some of these pain points. And these pain points have arisen because of these band-aid solutions. No one is focused on the core problem. And the core problem is the fact that the building block we use is too large. There's actually a smaller building block. Any developer in this room knows exactly what I'm talking about, and it's called the component. And anyone who's built a rich interface in the past five years knows how powerful the abstraction of a, of a component is. So why can't everyone use these components? Well, that's why we created MakeSwift. And MakeSwift is the first CMS that's designed around the idea of a web component. So if we make a CMS centered around components, what does it do to the workflow? Well, it does a lot of things for us. It makes it where reusing content between pages becomes much easier. It makes it where teams can work asynchronously and actually solves all of these issues. So I want to show you guys a little bit about what it can do. It also makes your team be able to, we're in the top right now, if you guys see that. <laughs> Convenient. And <clears throat> now your teams can actually make custom websites quickly. So I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of the product. Um, there's a lot here, so we're going to go kind of quick. First thing is, this is how you're going to manage your website, right? This looks just like Google Drive because conceptually your website is a file system. The, the slashes in the URL bar represent a file structure. And now you don't need to teach your teammates how to use the interface. You don't have to explain what a post is versus a page. Anybody who's touched a computer in the past decade immediately knows how to use this interface right here. The next thing is managing code snippets across multiple pages. This is typically a huge pain. We use things like Google Tag Manager to do this. This is something that should be baked into the platform that you use to manage your website. So we provide this out of the box for you now. So you can keep those tags consistent across a lot of different pages. The next thing is real-time collaboration. This is something that we've just become used to with Google Docs. Why, isn't it, why is this not uh, available in website builders? So we've actually made this idea of real-time collaboration a reality. Um, so we have this working right now in our early alpha, and you can actually build websites together, so just like Google Docs. And we've also, to support multiple types of personas, we've broken out the interface into multiple work modes. Designers get pixel-perfect control over every detail. Uh, content editors and interns can modify content without, you know, uh, you can put permissions around this, so that way, you know, you don't have to let somebody do something they can't do. Uh, we've added preview mode, so that way you can share these pages with external stakeholders without giving them access to all of your pages. And then comment mode, so that way you guys can collaborate. Um, we've also added in theming from Sketch. Uh, the last part, this is the most important piece, I just want to get through this real quick, but custom components. Ask me about custom components, because this is the magic. If, you've, uh, if you're a designer and you've used things like Sketch before, imagine building your website with symbols. Um, and then if you're a developer, imagine giving your marketing team control over all of your React components with just a few lines of code. Any questions? Our customer base are teams that, you, that use Re, um, WordPress for their main website, and then they have React developers on their team. That would be like, the most ideal fit. So custom components, there's two ways to make custom components. Um, a custom component might be something like your footer or your header, something that you make out of building blocks. Um, so the first way you can make it is visually. So you can drag and drop it, and then with one button, save it out as a custom component. And the second way you can make one is to code your own. So a React developer can actually take an existing component, some open source component that they didn't write themselves, and with a few lines of code, put those panels on the sidebar, so that way their non-technical teammates can configure that component. That is, that's Cooper Andrews, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is, is that the guy from Halt and Catch Fire? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, so the question is, can you use the URL and like query params to dynamically change stuff inside the page? And the answer is yes. Short answer is yes. With the snippets feature, yeah, with custom components and the snippets feature, you can do that. We'll also, we're also making sure that it supports any type of like after download type things like uh, Google Optimize and things like that. So, yes.
The question is, can you extract native code from the components? We've played around with the idea of an export to JSX feature, where you could just like, after the props have been configured, just export it out, so that way you could do a prototype visually and then take it out. Um, I don't know where it is in the priority list, but it's definitely possible, definitely doable. I know Figma does something, or not Figma, yeah, Figma does something similar in a few other tools, if you use those. So the question is really about SEO and how we handle SEO. Um, so pretty cool, so there's a couple things that we do. We server-side render all of the pages, so by default, everything that you're building is server-side rendered, but it's cool because we actually run the React application on your computer as well, so um, we're gonna make it so that way there's seamless, no loading, page, no loading screens at all, no loading time at all for your website once you've came to the website, but the initial load is rendered on the server so that way you get no loss in SEO. So it'll feel like a native client-side application, uh, but it'll also be fully compatible for SEO. And also with the style of our editor, uh, the markup that it generates is really semantic, so it ranks really well. Something is that we learned a lot of this stuff from landing lines, so we're bringing it over. How is the customer transition going? Um, it's going good, it's a lot of work. Um, we're manually rebuilding everyone's pages right now uh, because the architecture became different enough, so that's crazy, but uh, we've, been able to, uh, we've been able to sell about 75 people pre-ordered on the new product before it was launched. Um, our wait list is probably around 300 people right now, so the, the queue is pretty big, but uh, it's a good kind of busy, yeah. So how do you sign up for MakeSwift? If you go to makeswift.com, we have a wait list right now for our early access. We're especially looking for uh, designers and developers that want to stress test the system, play with our APIs, um, give us feedback, help us make templates. So let us know if you're interested. Um, shoot me an email, alan at makeswift or lindsay at makeswift in the back, or come find me afterwards. We'd love to talk to you. A-L-A-N. Thank you. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a question? Oh, nice. Nice, dude. <laughs> right here. Uh, so the question is, what is the subscription model after the introductory period? And the short answer is we have no clue. Uh, we're still testing a lot of stuff out. Um, it'll probably be metered somewhere around sites and the size of your team. Um, but we're still figuring that out. The, the deal is that anyone who signs up during early access gets grandfathered in for life, and they get a price lockdown. So that's kind of the incentive to come in now. All right. Thank you, Alan, A-L-A-N. Let's see, I have a fantastic pair of ATV socks. Now, if you are a lady, you're looking at these and you're like, ah, socks. But no, these are fantastic boot socks in the winter. I have several pair and they are amazing. So follow along with me on this. Okay, so the question for makeshift, make, make, shift, make swift, <laughs> apologies. What is the building block that make swift is centered around? Oh, need, oh yeah, all right, you were on it. Good job. <laughs> well, y'all are a little bit scary, but I like it. Okay, I asked for more energy. I, I got it. Ladies, I know I'm gonna have to hand this off for y'all good to go. Okay, one more round of applause for our last but not least presenter tonight. Let's hear. Hi everyone, saving the best for last, right? <laughs> I'm, um, I'm Hillary and this is Dana and we are the founders of Closeteer. So to get started, wanted to share a little bit about us. Um, Dana and I have known each other for over 10 years. Um, we both went to the Fashion Institute in New York, have worked in e-commerce, the retail space, and we really found that there was a problem in the market around affordability for women, just like us, um, to get outfits in an easy way. So Closeteer was born. It's your online destination for one-click outfits starting at $75. So when we were first developing the idea for Closeteer, um, we really found out that there was a lot of potential in the millennial and Gen Z demographics. Uh, being elder millennials ourselves, we wanted to create a product that resonated with us, um, that fulfilled the needs we had. So basically, um, millennial spending power is at $2.5 trillion, with 67% of them preferring to shop online. Gen Z, which is the demographic cohort 
following millennials is on track to become the largest generation of consumers by 2020. Yeah, so what we were finding is we, we can resonate, right, with this demographic, and we found some key industry problems. So the first is that there's not a seamless um, shopping experience. You go to a traditional retailer, it's very disjointed to try to put an outfit together. Um, so with Closeteer, you can just do one click and actually purchase the outfit. Um, subscription sites can be very expensive for us no subscription model, so the pricing strategy actually bundles, discounts um, your outfits and gives our customers a great incentive. Um, the third would be the struggle to disconnect by loving an influencer's outfit and then figuring out where to buy it. Um, so our curated outfit and partners with key influencers have helped us um, meet this need. And the third is customers aren't loyal, especially millennials. We are all about price conscious, and on the subscription sites, about 40% of people actually um, quit their subscription. So how it works is very simple. It was very important for us to have a very easy to follow, seamless user experience. So the way it works is customers shop outfits starting at $75. These are outfits styled by us, and they usually include three to five pieces, um, including accessories, tops, bottoms, dresses. Uh, shipping and returns are free when you purchase an entire outfit, and there are no subscriptions or styling fees or hidden costs with any of them. Yeah. So we wanted to give you a little taste of how it kind of works. So here is actually a product page, and what we do is we put the outfit together, you see it at $75, and then um, there's a full, um, on the product page, you can actually add the products, pick your sizes, pick the actual um, color of any of the products, and then just in one click, can add it to your cart. So this is, instead of being disjointed, having to go to different product pages, add it to your cart, figure out what size, um, this helps streamline that. Additionally, if you want to buy one product, that's totally fine. We love that. And you can actually say, I love these pants. I want to see what other outfits it's included. So it shows all the bundles of the outfits that it's included in. Great. So as part of this, our core foundation for Closeteer is really having like our internal styling team style these outfits, um, which is still our core monthly outfits come out. As they come, they sell, um, they sell out. And they're, and they're done. Um, we also found that influencers would reach out to us and say, hey, I want to curate an outfit. So we've partnered with local influencers that actually will name the outfit after them, share it on their channels as another way for us to get great curated content. Um, and the third is actually our customers come to us and say, I want to style my own outfit. That's awesome. So what we do is we help them um, build their own outfit and actually um, they, can, they can name it after themselves and we can put it on the site. So our customers are very important to us and our customer acquisition strategy has been built around going local. So we love shopping local and we love supporting local brands and in return, they love supporting us. So we've partnered with local influencers, photographers, um, other small businesses with similar demographics as us. Um, we've done influencer partnerships, giveaways and markets, events, et cetera, um, that really uh, help us reach our core demographic growth opportunities. With that being said, we do have a lot of opportunity to grow. We're still a new business. Uh, haven't even been around a year yet. And since we're at the ATL Tech Village, uh, we wanted to touch on the fact that there's a lot of opportunity to tap into data and technology to grow this. Um, whether that means building out a more robust bundling feature on our site or just overall enhancing the user experience, um, that's definitely on our to-do list. Product categories, we just have clothing and accessories right now. We could go into bags, shoes, plus sizes. The plus size market is a very underserved market. Um, and so I'll wrap it up. Menswear. <laughs> <laughs> Menswear, there's a lot of fellas. Oh, we're coming your way. <laughs> Yeah, so to just close it out before Q&A, um, we want to thank you guys. I mean, like Dana said, um, we're supporting local teams. So we also want you to go on our site, explore it, um, give us feedback on the user experience. Also, follow us on all of our social channels, and then you can email us if you have any questions. So we'll open it for Q&A. So the, um, the question was how if we're going to monetize through an affiliate network. So our affiliate network is like kind of step two. Right now it's um, really just partnering from a content perspective with the influencers, but that's our goal.
Sure, sure. So the question was about sustainability um, and how we're sort of um, addressing that. So right now, I think it's, um, we're really trying to think more on the side of how can we create affordability working with like local um, local artists, people that you know are in the in the um, local area who we can partner with. Yeah, and and also when we're styling and curating our outfits, our idea is to get the most out of our pieces. So we want all our items to be able to be mixed and matched with other closeteer items as well as the stuff that's already in your own wardrobe. Oh, the, uh, the question was, uh, what was I about to say about plus size? <laughs> <laughs> so the plus size market, as I mentioned before I ran out of time, <laughs> is very underserved. So there's, um, I think it's about 67% of women in America are plus size, so that's considered anything over size 12. Uh, yet only 18% of apparel sales uh, work for plus size clothing. So there's a big opportunity for us to kind of cater to that market. And um, yeah, I, I mean, we, we are very girl power and, and we want to support women and that means women of all sizes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. How long has this been happening? <laughs> so the question was, how long until men's outfits? I mean, we are really looking to put that in our, our 2019 roadmap. Um, you know, we've been asked a lot by our friends and their husbands and boyfriends um, wanting curated outfits, so. You should see our husbands, they're very fashionable. <laughs> so the question is, who is our competition? Um, you wanna actually, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah, a lot of people compare us to Stitch Fix, but we're not a subscription model. So we're, we're kind of a hybrid of fast fashion, so your H&M taking their price point strategy, um, meets the curation and personalization of a Stitch Fix, but without the commitment. And then also um, specialty online retailers, so your Rent the Runway, your Madewell, like those really niche markets, and kind of combining all three of those elements together. Yeah. Sure. You had it first, Greg. Oh. <laughs> So the question is if we, um, we're gonna partner with local retailers. And yeah, definitely. I mean, we've already partnered with a few brands here in Atlanta. Um, we partnered with a few in LA. So we definitely carry different types of brands. So as we grow, we're looking to partner with more. Yeah, we definitely wanna expand upon that and especially supporting other women-run businesses. That's definitely one of our goals. Yep. <laughs> um, so the question was how are we handling fulfillment? We are handling fulfillment <laughs> yeah. right now. Real, real talk, this is, we both work full time, so this is our, our side hustle, as we call it. Our warehouse is Hillary's home office. <laughs> so, yeah, so as we scale, I'm sure we will look into other, other venues for that. But yes, that's right the goal. Now it's us. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. So the question was about Shopify and any sort of technical um, obstacles maybe we faced. And I would definitely say we, yes, um, we are on Shopify and we actually um, partner with a third party tool for our bundling option. Um, you know, there's limitations there that we definitely want to make sure that, you know, moving forward, some of our, our feedback from customers have been just from a usability standpoint. And when you're working with the third party app, they can only give you so much. So the goal is, and we'd love to speak with anybody with Shopify experience, um, um, we want to have a more cu custom experience, so. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So the question was about how we can keep that $75 price point, um, and that's where we start, kind of what, what Dana was saying. Um, and so we have like three to five items, so that in can include, we, do, we stare away from jeans right now, um, handbags, anything with a bit more high quality price point. And so we find things that are more fashion forward, trend forward, and we work with vendors um, to keep us in that price range. Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you guys. Fantastic. All right. That was our final presenter for the night. All right. This is the shirt I was wearing in Seattle when people waylaid me and wanted to talk to me about ATV. So I recommend you think hard about this question, which is, 
And no, if you've already gone, you can't go again. I got a text about that. The answer is no. Um, how much buying power do millennials have? All right. I feel like we should clap for him. He's the last one. Right. Thank you all for coming out tonight. We only had four presenters. Sad one presenter back out. Womp womp. So that sadly means they don't get to go again. You only get to play once. Um, if you are interested in chatting with me about presenting, come see me after. If you want to talk to the volunteers, they are in the back wall. If you want to see the other presenters, they will be up front. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you.